He's in my vestibule. Hello. There he is. Oh my gosh, you're here and you and have you, sound. Praise you have, I have sound? to Jesus. Oh my God. So I don't know what was going on. I had no sound and you couldn't get me. But you know what I, I think it was, Carson? What? I think I, when you go into your sunroom because of the brick wall, Right. I think that exterior brick wall is, is your connection can't get through it. I don't know. I've been doing all of them from there, but today it's a little windy also. So maybe it's the weather and my satellite internet. Um, but you're totally, you're like, you're looking good. I can hear you perfect. Fantastic. I'm sitting at my piano and. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, I'm just, I'm very comfortable. So, yes. um, how so, are you? How are things at the lake? Things are good. Um, I am, um, you know, just kind no. of, you know, quarantining with my dogs. And I have uh, my friend Ernie's at my house, guest house. And, yeah. And he's totally, he had the coronavirus as well. So <laughs> he's over it. So I think we're both kind of like, okay. And right. So, we have dinner and drinks every night and um, kind of laugh and talk about how weird it is that we just live within like, you know, not a lot of just here in one place. I, I yep. know. We're all we're all shut ins now. Now we no, know what it's so going to be like when we're 100. I can't stay up after like 11 o'clock. I'm like, I can barely. Really? Fly. Yeah. And we were watching, we were watching Curb Your Enthusiasm last night and having Are uh, Sangria. Mm. Which, uh, which is a, a gift from one of my neighbors. My buddy you... gave me this great sangria that I just discovered in my basement. I forgot I had it. And I oh have like cases of it. So, in your sangria bomb shelter? In my sangria bomb shelter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. You know so, what? It's Friday. I used and I'm... Uh, and by the thank... way, I don't have a drink today. I'm getting a drink right now. Oh, my God. I'm going to get a drink, too. Don't move. I'm, I'm having some Pinot Grigio because it's open. Everybody, you can see what I'm drinking. Here it is. It's my little bit of Pinot. And uh, I'm going to say F it. And it's Friday. That's what I mean by F. And look at this back. cute glass. I'm back with my Sancerre. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm having, I think, an inexpensive Pinot oh, Grigio. But it's open. Sorry we're making you dizzy at home. I'm desperately trying to open this wine. Bear with me. Okay. Get ready, kids. Carson. There we go. Mama's got her medicine. Okay. I've got my medicine now, too. Look how cute it is. It's in this in this glass. It's a heavy pour. But I put it in this glass. It actually sits down on the table. And then you can flip it upside down before you entertain. I thought yes. Do you know what do you know what that is? Yeah. What is it? This that's is a, a, what? That's a that's a hunting cup it's and a, when you would go on like a fox hunt with horses you would have those and it would have like a dual purpose then you flipped it over and you're able to drink out of it. Yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah. I'm just drinking out of this like pewter like Arte. Uh, I know What's that, that company uh, Antica de Tuscany or whatever. We're Oh my god, we're we're sisters. Here, cheers. Cheers. Hey, I have, a, I have something else for you, a gift. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I can't give it to you. It's not oh, a gift. But I thought of you this morning when I put this on. I what? Let me it. see. Oh, that's really good. The my eagle American, belt buckle. My American eagle belt buckle. And every time I see this in this closet in Skinny Alice, I think of you. Oh, my gosh. I'm right? just, I'm flattered. And I love it. Yes. And you and look I'm, really... Okay. You still look really skinny. How are you doing it with the wine? And I'm having comforting carbs every day. I'm not really drinking that much. I have a glass of wine when I do this during the day. I have one glass mm -hmm. of wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, a goblet, which is probably like three glasses of wine. But I do that during the day. Then I don't drink again. And with dinner, I've been having like, tonight we'll make margaritas. Mm -hmm. We make a plan, Ernie and I. And so we're like, Tonight will be margaritas. We'll have a couple of those. Last night was sangria. That was fun. But we didn't, we, you know, it's like we start cooking at like 7, 8 o'clock. And, mm -hmm. and then it's like 11 o'clock. We've only had like three three drinks and we're out. For the night. It's like you live in an elder care facility now. I swear to you. I know exactly what to do when I'm living at, with uh, my friends, in, w probably with you in Florida. Yes. Golden Girls. 
Yes, we're going to open, Tom and I are going to open an, an elder care facility for fabulous gays called Shady Shady Pines. Shady Shady, shady <laughs> Pines. Shady <laughs> as Pines. <laughs> yeah, it's even shadier than the regular Shady Pines. Um, so um, this, is yes. some new, this is some news of the day. I've been, I've been embroiled in a real controversy. Over. Well, last night on The Real Housewives of New York, which yes. the, the season has just started. It was the first episode. Yes. And I don't normally watch that much, but Dorinda told me to watch and we're friends. So yes. I did. And um, she, you know, she broke her ribs during like the, like the day before the first day of shooting, right? No, I know nothing. Well, um, so she does like the interview about what happened. She's like, well, I was dancing with Carson Kressley and he was showing me some of those Dancing with the Stars moves. And bam, he flung me across the room and I broke my rib. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did um, that, happen? That, that happened, but not exactly in that way. And right. I was just like, I don't think uh, I broke a rib. I think. I think she broke. Oh, the, the, yeah, the booze. She, was, was she boozed up or you boozed up? Because usually uh, you know, booze. You know what? I think it was, it was happy hour and we were all very happy. And um, it was were, very sweet. Didn't you, is this when you stayed at her house? Yes, and she was totally, she was totally nice about it. Oh, and, she's she, a, and by the way, she's a doll. She's really fun. She's uh, such a trooper. Yeah, and she actually, my dogs very often are at her house because you know Greg Clayho, my ex-boyfriend. Right. He's friends with her, and um, and they're super close. And he's actually quarantined up at her house right now. And, right. Um, and so that's, yeah, she's, she's great. I really like her a lot. I've known her for a long time. And she, I remember when she was married to Richard and he was such a fabulous guy. And then mm -hmm. he was gone for a long time. And, um, and now I think she's single. And yeah. I, no. not, I don't watch Housewives. I'm not, you know, I don't like consistently and I never watch it in order. But I, I don't watch it usually fun. either. But I, I love I love Dorinda. It was a very funny story. Yeah, yeah she's a doll. And she we really were calling is. it Tango Gate. Now, but, wait a minute, but I feel like that was a while ago that you um, that yeah, happened. So that this was, is when it was filming, and that's when you broke her ribs? Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. God, you're such a, you're, you got to stop manhandling these ladies. I know, I know. There's another no, another bitch gets oh, in my way. Look out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody messes uh, with my man but me. No, there's a, do the. Um, so wait, I have some questions for you or like some big, so you're on dr Drag Race is tonight, isn't it? Drag Race, um, episode six is tonight. Yes. I'm on it. Tonight is um, clock on VH1, right? Yeah, and you should, that would be a good quarantine um, and have some quarantinis. I'm and it. it's here's a fun tip. Okay. It's Friday night. We've all been quarantined for weeks. Um, make a quarantini. Yes. Um, and then every time you hear the word girl, girl, have a drink. Girl, have a drink. <laughs> uh, you will be hammered by about 8 15, and it starts okay, at 8 because do that today as well, every time we say girl. We can oh. apply to get into like our, our little kind of thing that we're doing. I, I just did. Um, I just did. So, so yeah. So, so you, how the, long have you been doing Drag Race now? How many years? I have been doing it for about six years. I did season um, six. I mean, I did season seven, eight, right. nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. And I've done all stars uh, two, three, and four. Maybe yes. five. I can't remember. I've caught, I've caught various ones with you on it. And because I'll be flipping through and I'll see you and I'll be like, ah, I'm not going to have to watch it. You're good. You're hilarious, by the way. And you're, I like the way you, you, you're, yeah, you're a good judge. Thanks, girl. Thank girl. <laughs> mm. so do, you have any, do you have any like favorite stories from Drag Race? Like any memories or stories that you love? Like hilarious, like anything really funny? Um, I'm trying to think of really hilarious. Basically, um, tonight is a really good episode because it's the snatch game and it's basically <laughs> like the match game and um, the queens all have to do an impersonation because the, they the, call it snatch girl. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Was that girl? Girl? 
Girl. Girl. Mm. Girl. So all the queens have to do an impersonation. And usually there's one or two that like nails yeah. it and you're like, oh my God, that is Nancy Grace. Like, um, that's what I would do if I were doing it. I do Nancy Grace and someone did Nancy. It's like, oh no, girl, that is not a good Nancy Grace. You have to you said lean. girl. You said girl. girl. You have to lean forward into your computer camera and say, why would she leave that baby in the car? Let's go. Why would she leave that baby in the car? I've got the DA of Southern Tallahassee Regional Regional Court District. Let's go to him. That's how Nancy Grace would do it. But yeah. Yeah. why anyway, would he leave that baby in the car? Why would she leave that baby in the car, girl? Girl, oh, jeez. Um, I have another question for you. Yes, keep going. Okay, so RuPaul, right? Yes. I'm, first of all, he's on a, he, well, I, you know, like, his character is, when he's in character, he's on this billboard in Chelsea. Oh, yes, um, yes. You know, the big one, it's, it's hilarious. And it's really great. He's, I mean, it's amazing how, um, you know, what he's done in his career. But yes. what is, like, what's the difference between him when he's in character than when he's sort of himself? Like, is there, is it, is it right? Different? Is he different? Is it like? No, I, I think, um, I mean, he's the world's most famous, most celebrated, and probably most talented, most successful drag queen ever. And we've been friends for a long time. And um, something about when you do drag, and I have dabbled occasionally. Have I've never up, done I've been Of course. No, I have to tell No, no, no. We could contour that. Uh. <laughs> um I, you'd be a stunning B. Arthur. I'd put you in a big Eileen Fisher caftan. Caftan. Oh, God, you'd be easy like, breezy. I would end up having to be like kind of a, I think I would have to be like a lady who likes ladies because. Maybe. I, I think I would have to be a lady who likes ladies. I don't feel like my voice or my nose are very like helpful for that. I think you would be a handsome woman. <laughs> you mean fugly. <laughs> or that. Or that, but we should do you up. I um, um, I have done drag like for Halloween and stuff. We used to always do it. And my best drag story is I I one year we went as the bitches of Eastwick, and we went as like the witches of Eastwick. And I was, you I was, was I was Michelle Pfeiffer, I think. You were Michelle Pfeiffer, girl, girl, and. I had a big giant wig and we looked like the Witches of Eastwick and we went to Splash when Splash was still open and they had a Halloween costume contest and we got up on stage and the stage was where the showers were where the guys used to shower oh, like kind of... They used to shower up the top. And then oh, scantily clad. And they used to go in that glass thing that was like four shower heads or something. Oh God, it was magic. Can it you was... believe that was like actually like real when you think about it? You know what? And somebody needs to bring it back because it was, it was a cultural... Well, we're going to have to behind glass walls and showering all the time. <laughs> right. I'm down with that. Um, but anyway, That's I had on black glittery lipstick and like false eyelashes. And we got up on stage and I showed my ass and we won like $500. And then it was in drink tickets, though, because when you win a contest at a bar, you only get drink tickets, which yeah. are basically like carnival ride tickets from the 1950s. I don't know yeah. where they find them. By the way, yes. I, I, I used to get, sometimes when I would go there, like the manager or the owner or whoever he was, would give me like three or four of them to like give to my friends. Right. No, so that's what we got. And then I went downstairs and there was the hottest like Arabic man. That was the scary part downstairs. I loved downstairs. I, loved... I remember having to go down there to go to the cash machine and I was like, oh girl. I uh, oh shoot girl <laughs> oh girl let me get that I love basements I love catacombs I love dangerous places mother may I sleep with danger naughty, naughty. I'm an above ground gal mm. <laughs> no so okay. I went I went down there and I made out with the um, Middle Eastern guy and he was very on the DL which if you're watching and you don't know the gay lingo means like he wasn't out. Yeah. Which is why he was hiding in a shadowy nook <laughs> of the basement at Splash. But I sat on his lap and I made out with him for a good 20 minutes as a lady. And um, oh my when, God. 
I, 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 I've seen you. I've seen you in drag. You're actually you're you you're good. You know, I look like I look like Juliette Lewis at all times. Know, you're good. You're good. I Much mean, sure dismay. I don't think I could. I don't think I would be. This. I feel like I would be so. I don't just don't know. I don't. No, <laughs> we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it. You know what? I feel like you have to do everything once. So like, I would. I would give it a whirl. We'll come. But, we'll bring you to Drag Con um, in September at the Javits okay. Center in New York, and we'll do I'll, you up. I'll do it. I'll um, do it. I mean, but I want to finish a lot of professional makeup. But wait, yes. someone sent us a question, and I know this oh. is something that we've answered before. Oh. How did the two of us meet? How did you and I meet? So do you want to tell it? Um, we met. Um, um, Eddie Bernard, our cameraman from Get a Room, is watching, and we love you so oh. much. Oh, hey, hey. Um, We oh. met. Um, I, we were both members of the same gym, if you can yes. imagine. And... Yeah. We were young and gorgeous. We looked like East German weightlifting women. And uh, it was called. Let me tell this part. Let me tell this part. Okay, I, keep going. I used to walk into the gym and I would get there and Carson was always in like the front area where the reception desk was. And he was always with these two like muscly like trainer guys who I now know them because they're Carson, they're two of Carson's best friends. But he was always there with them. And so I thought Carson was like the Julie McCoy of the the gym. And I thought you were like the cruise director. Because there right. was someone that would check you in at the front desk. And then there were the two um, guys. And I would always say hi to Carson. And he seemed to know everybody and was like super comfortable and kind of like at the front area mostly. And then right. I would out and every once in a while you would like pop up at a machine or something near me and we would talk for a little bit. And yeah. we catch up, and you were working at Ralph Lauren at the time, and I was working for like Jeffrey Bill Huber or or somebody at the time. You know, I can't remember. Hello, and uh, I was popping up. You were popping up. Oh my god, yeah. pop it up, girl. <laughs> oh, but that was hilarious. But I are fun. Really funny. I used to tell people when I used to, I always tell people that you and I used to be power lifters. Yeah, we were. Now we're just power queens. <laughs> power, power something. I don't want to give too much away. No, I like to keep but, the but mystique. Remember, but remember when we were at that age, right? Okay, so we're like new to New York. We're yes. Both working in our various fields. You're in fashion. I was in interiors. And, you know, um, drag was like something that we would go. It was kind of like you'd go to the East Village. and Yes. To, like some like little fun place that was kind of like... The like like a dark, you kind of go the in. The Pyramid Club. The Pyramid yeah. Club. Yeah. And so it was always, isn't it amazing to think that in our, like, 20, 30, 20 years in New York or 25 years or whatever. 30. 30. Um, that now it's so mainstream. Like, families are watching it on television and they're, like, rooting for who they want to win. And it's yes. amazing how it's become so mainstream and it's such a part of like our culture. It's just so interesting to me. I love it. I think it's such a great thing because it's another window into everybody. It can be who they want to be. Kind of, as long as you're a good person and you have big gorgeous eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think yes. it's amazing. I just now realized that you I can love do all these sparkles. How Instagram do you lives with can a I filter. Is that the filter with the face with the stars on it? Yeah, and there's, oh, now I did the snowflake one. I'm just trying to look attractive. Okay, there we go. So you can do these Instagram lives with a filter on and look how much better I look. <laughs> oh, wait. Lashes. Oh, you hear your bubbles. I'm gonna do bubbles. Oh, look, see, it's like kind of snowing. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't take much to- It's a um, jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. This one is very, um, this one, it? oh, this one is very, let's get physical, physical, I wanna I get know, physical. Okay, meanwhile, okay, Carson, I have a question I think most people want to know about you. Yes. We all know you from TV, you're, you're, you're a TV pro, you're, I mean, every time I turn the television on, there's Carson, you're on TV. And I'm, you're, a, I'm a Scorpio. You're really good. You're a Scorpio. I um, like long walks to the ATM. And to like the local bar. Um, mm -hmm. but we all know you from TV, but 
How did you become, I mean, I know you, you grew up in Pennsylvania and your family had a uh, horse farm, but how did you become a champion equestrian? Like how oh, did, gosh. How did, Corey, how did Carson Kressley, the person we know from television, become sort of like, like you, you live on a horse, you have a horse farm, you live in New York, Park Avenue, and you're, um, you know, you're a fancy gal with a horse farm. How did I turn into Curtis this person Kressley. right here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, um, and on Monday, my live is all about horses, but basically, uh, my grandparents, um, my grandmother, yeah. Yeah. very like, you know, like sometimes you have a relative that's kind of like your kindred spirit. Yes. Yeah. And my grandmother, my dad's mom was a uh, Scorpio. Her name was Pauline and she grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania in like the 1920s. And it was very rugged. And they had work horses, but yeah. she always wanted to have a pony because, like, that was what was fun. Like, work horses were like heavy machinery. Right. So, right. by 1950, she was like, I'm getting an effing pony. We have some money now. My grandfather started a car dealership. They were so fabulous, and they would, they drove a big fancy car and they would go to horse auctions and buy ponies. And they started a pony farm, and one turned into two. And she supposedly bought it for my dad. My dad had no interest, it was all for her. And um, they eventually had like 200 ponies by the 1960s. And they had, this was one of them right here. That right here. One. I, telling me that when I was in your house, if that was like. A yeah. Of your grandmother. A, yeah, that was my grandmother's like prized possession. And um, so I was lucky. So I grew up next to that farm and we always had hundreds of ponies. And I would just jump out in the field and get on whatever. It was, you know. It was like an after-school special on ABC. Yeah. It's like a lonely gay and a herd of ponies. <laughs> um, and then cue the sad music. What kind of cars? Okay, a viewer wants to know what kind of cars did they sell? Oh, what kind of cars? Um, yeah. uh, Chrysler Plymouth when there was such a thing. Yes. And, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Jeep and Eagle oh, when yeah, there yeah. was such a yeah. thing. My dad always drove, I think, a New Yorker. That was like his thing. Oh. Like, forever. Like, yeah, you know, we had. Yeah. My we had New Yorkers had and Imperials and Cadillacs. Yeah. Oh, the Imperial. That was the other one. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, the that was the super fancy Chrysler. Yeah. Yeah. And um, as a Chrysler dealer, you we had to have an Imperial. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, that's so funny. I love knowing that because I think that makes so much sense. First of all, I love that you're like that your family member that you identify with is your grandmother. Hello, sister. Hello, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Um, I have such a great memory. One of my favorite memories um, was when you and I were in Tennessee. We were in Nashville. Right. And we woke up one day and we were having breakfast. And you said, you know, my friends have a horse farm. It'd be really fun. Let's go out to their horse farm and like just sort of be there for the day. And you'll love that. Right. So we went out to their horse farm which was so fun. They were a lovely couple and they had this kind of great house and this like, yes. driveway. And we were there with our driver who was like waiting in the driveway. And you were, <laughs> remember, it was so hilarious. Yes. And, like, and they gave us a tour of their barn, which was really beautiful and like their tack room and all of that. And then you and I, you, you and I were in the like sort of the, the one of the arenas, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. And then you went into the secondary one and you actually were like serious. I have that video of that. Where you right, were, right. You were like really serious. But before that, you kind of had me on the horse and we were, that was fun. I loved it because yes. you, the little tips that you gave me when I was on the horse were so helpful because so many times when I've, um, when I've been on a horse, it, you, it's very like, you know, informal and people are mm -hmm. with are kind of like drunk, drunk or not really like focused or there's a whole bunch of us. And so, but that was really fun. And I have, we have a great photo of the two of us from there. Yeah, it was the photo that we used to promote today's episode. And it was yeah, oh, Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. riding a Frisian at um, my dear I, I friends, um, Todd and Leslie Miles at their yeah. Milestone Farm yes. in White House, Tennessee. So if you live in Nash Vegas. Yeah. By the way, um, you, know, I, you know, I love Nashville and we had so much fun, you and I, we did um, the, uh, what was it? The, uh, oh, Pickler and Ben Pickler show. And show in Nashville. I think we did it a couple of times. We did like a holiday special where my reason yeah. was a hooker and yours was like all natural and beautiful. 
Um, I loved Pickler and Ben. I'm so sad it's not See, on anymore. I loved going to Nashville. I love Nashville. I really love Nashville. And I think it's a great place. And I know they've been through a lot recently with the tornadoes and um, all of the craziness. And now they were just dealing with the tornadoes and then all of this happened. I'm sure they're, um, I haven't been there in a few months, but. Yes. It's speaking of, speaking it's, of Nashville. Yes. And we're just rambling and I'm kind of getting a little loopy from my Pino. Yeah. I'm so um, <laughs> there is a great artist and I've been discovering all this new music because yeah. I got the Apple nine ninety nine, you know, a month download, whatever music you want. Yeah. And I'm a very cheap person. I will gladly sk skimp on the necessities. Like I don't even have cable, but like, I have a bunch of Hermes scarves that I framed. By, so. by the way, right now, just so you know, I actually, um, Rosalie from my office, who's amazing, mm -hmm. um, and every day she and I have a call in the morning. Right. And we kind of get our ducks in a row and do like all our office stuff. She actually, I told her, I said, you know, my, um, my, in, my internet and all that, I have to make my internet. I actually went to Staples and they put the thing in my trunk we brought it back and um, we hooked it up. And now I have internet all over my property. I mean, uh -huh. I only have like an acre and a half or whatever, but it's all over. It goes from every, the- Oh, the really? Boathouse. Outside? Yeah. yeah, so now I have that. We hooked that up. And then That's Rosalie, magic. Rosalie spoke to um, the people at Fios and really got us a better deal here with um, all of our channels. I got us a new box an updated box, because I haven't had a new box, I guess. And Congratulations. Girl, girl, I haven't had a new box. Girl, here's to vagiplasty. And by the way, a voice, I'm getting a voice activated um, remote. But you know, I've got to integrate it. I have one of those systems that everything's integrated into one rack in the basement with all this uh -huh. stuff. So it's kind of complicated. But anyways, so now's a good time to call your provider and, oh. and say, hey, listen, I don't want to leave, but I'm being offered another deal from this other company called Spectrum. And you talk to Fios and you basically can negotiate. Rosalie's really good at it. I feel like I would be, huh. I, I would, I don't know if that's my, that's not well, really wheels, like my wheelhouse, but no, that was, that's, a good, that's a good tip. And another good tip is right now when we're all trying to save money, cause we don't know what's going on yeah. is um, look at all of your apps and um, see the things like, I had a million apps on there that I, I never use, used, that I, I used use. one time. I know, I know. Um, and I've That's been canceling those. You know, yeah. I have been organizing my entire house, but I think this is a really great thing. I'm going to organize my phone. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's, organize your phone. Organize your computer. Yeah, yeah my computer. But you know what? I, I, when I get up in the morning, I feed the dogs. I have, like, I make coffee. And then I do like some office calls with Rosalie and Laura and various designers that are working on projects that, that with our clients. And I do that. Then I, you know, I kind of, then I do this, which is I love because it keeps me feel, I feel like you get out of your house, you know? Yeah. And I feel like we're, we're working, like we're doing a job, like we're going yeah. to work by like doing it's this just, every day. So I connect with people and I always get interesting like text messages or instant messages from people, which is really great. And you just kind of like keep up with, you feel like you're anyways. And then before you know it, I'm like, then I start organizing something around the house. I pick a room, I pick a closet, but now I'm going to do my phone. You're that's, welcome. That's a great idea. And I think everyone. But. Should, um, so Carson, I thought it'd be funny, even though I'm going to tell the story, I'm going to tell some of these stories in like PG version. Oh, good. I think it's funny. I'm going to tell one funny story from when we were children um, and we were working together on Queer Eye and all of those shenanigans happened. I think it's so funny that when we were um, doing Queer Eye back in the day and we were it was like, you know, every week they'd be like, you're going to be on Ellen. You're going to be on Oprah. You're going to be on. Right. Um, there are two funny stories. The Oprah story. Do you remember my friend Margo? Yes, and she lost her ring at Oprah. Yeah. So my friend Margo, who I grew up with, who was like, she loved Oprah growing up. And so when I, when we were asked to be on Oprah, I thought like, oh, of all the people I know in the world, my best friend Margo, who I grew up with from when we were little kids. I mean, we were mm -hmm. little kids. 
like six, seven years old. Like in the 1930s. And like, actually the wheel wasn't even invented yet. Actually, uh -huh. we, we met, we both were on bicycles with train wheels. And anyway, so Margot, I decided she should go, she should come to Oprah because she loves Oprah. So when we talked and I said, okay, you fly to Chicago. We got, she got there. She was there before me. She was, um, she was like be, befriending, um, what's Oprah's best friend, a gal. Gail. Yep, she was be befriended her somehow. And Gail was like, I'm gonna fix him up with my friend. And, and, um, and then um, I said that Margo was my assistant to make it make sense. Right, know? right. And I had to go a few days before you guys because I had to get the house ready for the right. takeover for So I was there like one day before you and Kyan and Jay and Ted. And so um, Margo and I were there and she was supposedly my assistant. Meanwhile, she was not my assistant, clearly. But um, the day that she was in the audience, when we were we walked out on stage, she was wearing her grandmother's like cocktail ring. Right. Um, grandmother Solvik's uh, cocktail ring. And when Oprah walked out and she would walk through that like walkway area, she was right. everybody's hands. And yeah. she slapped Margo's hand in her mother grandmother's ring. And I knew her grandmother Solvik flew off into the audience. And right. When we were on stage. Uh, Margo was crying, but I thought she was crying because she was so like happy. Moved. Yes. Like, oh, I can't believe little Tommy's on Oprah. You know what I mean? And then, but then it got worse and worse and worse. And we went to commercial. Oprah was like, is your friend okay? And I was like, let me go check. <laughs> and it's like, our, we were so nervous. We were so nervous. This is like the first time we met Oprah. I go mm -hmm. out, I go in the audience, I go, Margo, are you okay? And she goes, I'm like, you're so sweet. And I did everything okay. And she's like, Oprah smacked my grandmother's ring off my hand. And I'm like, oh my God. So then I went and told Oprah that she, on right. that she and Oprah shut the production down and said, everybody stand up, look around, and feel around for a ring. And somebody found the ring. I remember. It the ring to Oprah. And then Oprah had Margot come up on stage, and Oprah put the ring on Margot. And oh, I, my God. It's like they got married. It's like they got married. So after we left, right, that was amazing. But after we left town, Margot decided to stay an extra day. And we, remember we were given those little tokens, like the food tokens? No. We were given. Oh yeah, we, we, we yeah we had like a food voucher. <laughs> we had food vouchers. And, so and Margo we had went to Hyatt. Margo went to Spago, right? And she was at Spago, and she was having dinner with some people that were going to be on the show the next day. And uh -huh. Margo are cooking with the chef, and Oprah and Gail walk in, and Oprah goes, "Is that Margo?" <laughs> no. Margo Margo was cooking. So the producer called me the next day and said, you know, we're seriously thinking of doing a TV show called Margo, and we're just going to follow her around. Anyway, that's one of my favorite stories. She was, um, Margo was like, um, she is like, um, she is like, uh, you know, where Margo goes, trouble follows. Like there was always, oh there's always, she's no, Calamity Jane. It was Calamity Jane. There was one time we were out we were on uh, Michigan Avenue and she, I went into a bookstore to get books for the house and I come out and she's on top of like one of the electrical vehicles taking pictures with the guys. And we had the limo out front waiting for me to, cause they would just drive you around in a limo. This was like. Yes, yeah. but I, all, I also remember that when we went to our first Oprah, which was amazing. And I got to do many, many Oprah shows yeah. since then. Um, uh, we were all, everybody but you was on the plane. It was me and Kyan and Jay and Ted. No, that's because I was there already. Right, right. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we were boarding and we're going to like seat 34J. And um, it was like at the peak of like Queer Eye fame. And this like really Brooklyn guy goes, hey, I got a hip tip for you. Don't fly coach. <laughs> Uh, and I, we were just like, we're like, no, we're going to Oprah. And it was very fun. And I remember we stayed at the Hyatt. And um, oh, there is. by the way, that is, I love that guy, whoever he is and wherever he is in the world. I hope he's, I hope he hears this because that is he's still around. That's been hilarious. I love He's that. still around. Did we get any design questions today? I can't believe it, but I don't think we did. No, Let's that see. They can watch us all day. Wait, I have a question for you, Carson. I've got a good question for you. What, what, what? If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? Oh. <laughs> Girl. Super. Oh, God. 
The hour's almost over. I'm done with no. my my my, my Chablis glass. Um, I think my I, I don't know what my superpower would be, but the superpower I would love to have is to be invisible. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one. Wouldn't that could, be great? Oh God, I'm getting trouble. You could be everywhere, and you could spy on people. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, Get that's all one. kinds of information. Okay, um, I love that. So your superpower would be invisible. And by the way, what I think, would yours be? I think I want to fly because I just I hate you know going to the airport and dealing with all that. I just like to fly. I'd be able to just like and in my dreams, I'm always flying. Oh, um, you're getting a call. Who is it? So, um, it's my one of my very good friends, Greg Connors, who's also one of my good friends, and we're working on a project together in Florida. He's a great I don't friend. know him. Um, he's from DC. Um, I ski with him every uh, year in Japan, and he, I've known him for a long time, um, him and his ex-boyfriend and, um, I ski with him all the time. And then he, uh, he's, and we, we just have maintained a friendship and he's a great guy. And, uh, he has a really fun group of friends from DC who I love. And, uh, DC guys are really hot for some reason. Yeah, they're, they're kind cool. of like preppy and they wear like a lot of Brooks Brothers and they always yeah. have kind of terrible outfits on but not really yeah no and I mean, it's kind of like Boston guys yeah totally Boston and DC are like the same but they're all they're like they're easier I think New York guys can sometimes you know like you get too many New York days together and it can be a lot of energy another question for you Carson yes yes and we have to go quick if you, okay. we had an international Carson Cressley day if we had an international Carson Cressley Day, how would we celebrate it? Oh, gosh. I think we would be at, like, um, we would be, like, at a nude beach for bodybuilders with free alcohol for everyone, 18 plus, of course. And, um, yeah, and then there would just be drag shows going on, and everybody gets a free cashmere sweater and <laughs> pony rides. Done. That's hilarious. I love that. Okay. That's um, really I could see that's a, by the way, I love that you brought pony full circle. Thank you. Do yeah. you have a favorite front door color? Someone's asking. By the way, that's so funny. I do. Um, you know, I really love, I mean, look, classic glossy black is really chic. Yes. Um, I love, I really love any color, like chartreuse is a great front door. Right. Color. I love hydrangea blue. Rod Robin's egg blue. Which one? Robin's Egg Blue Robin's is gorgeous. Robin's Egg Blue is fabulous. Robin's Egg Blue is also great for a ceiling and above an entrance. Um, I love, I get, you know what, I really like. Or yellow, sunny yellow. Or, or even a pink front door, just like a hot pink front, like a really great pink, like soft pink. I can I see. Have a, you look, be, there's my aqua roof in my dining room. Yeah, that's fabulous. See, but that's a great color. That aqua is so pretty. I love okay. It. And then the other design question before we yeah. have to go yeah. is, um, let me see. If you design a home from scratch, where do you start? Um, I would say when you design, um, um, I would say when, you know, you start with the bones, first of all. When you're mm -hmm. re redesigning your house, the first thing you want to do is you want to start with the actual bones of the rooms. You want to look at the baseboards, the walls, the ceilings, the doors, and really sort out the actual bones of the room. The second thing you want to do, and Carson, we always did this on, on Get a Room, mm -hmm. is that then what we look at is the plan of the space, how we want to use the space, how we want to lay the furniture out. And you want to have that plan so that you know that when you're looking for a sofa, are you looking for an eight foot sofa? Are you looking for a crescent sofa? Are you looking for a sectional sofa? Right. You want to know what, so you need to have, get the bones of the room organized, paint, wallpaper, trim color, door color, floor finish, floor, you know, whatever. And then you want to build from there. Then you want to do the layout of the room so you understand how you want to use the space. Because if it's a family room or a living room or a dining room or a bedroom, you really want to understand how you're using that space. And then once you have that, those two plans in place, then you can have fun and start to decorate. And we, right. always, we always did that on, on Get a Room. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And having the plan is so important. And yeah. um, um, it really allows you to like have a plan for shopping and everything. Yeah. And it's just yeah. you stay organized with a floor yeah. plan. I agree. Um, I have a question for you. Do you have a question that you want to ask? 
No, I just have a comment. It says yeah. Eddie Bernard put mirrors on all my window frames because of Get a Room. And that oh. was such a great tip, yeah, um, that, lining your window frames with mirror. Yeah, well, you know, I that was something that um, I learned early, early in my career when I worked with Parrish Hadley, and they did that a lot in New York City apartments where they would do that, where they added that mirror piece. And we did that on one of our episodes, and it was really great. Um, Carson, my question for you is, what makes an interior to Carson Kressley beautiful? Like, what is the thing that you think, like when you leave a room or you go to somebody's house, what is the thing that you think makes it intrinsically beautiful? Oh gosh, um, beautiful. I mean, I think um, when it looks like that person's personality, that's yeah. the most memorable thing to me. Um, yeah. I've been in many spaces that are beautifully designed, but they look a little anonymous. I'm like, who lives here? Yeah. And those spaces tend to look like a model home or like a hotel yeah. lobby. Um, I want to see, um, you know, artwork and artifacts and things that are personal, just like an outfit. I want to see like a great necklace or a fabulous accessory that was handed down by like a grandmother or something. Right. And that I, makes it really memorable. Well, also, I mean, just like you're sitting in front of, um, a, a painting, a horse painting of something that was your, that, that would dates back to your grandparents. And mm -hmm. I think that's fabulous. I mean, I think that gives a history and a lineage and a story. And it, it starts whenever you feel emotionally connected to the things that are around you and they don't have to be an heirloom. They can be, mm -hmm. you can be, the, you can be the first person to start this process. Um, because you know, not everybody has a grandmother who had a fabulous horse farm. Um, and so it's you can be that you can be the person you can be the first step in this process. You don't have right. the second or the third. So I think it's great whenever anybody feels emotionally connected and interested in the things that are around them and that authentically tell their story. But right. our, speaking of telling our story, we are out of time. Oh my gosh! Well, Fine, it's been amazing. I will be back with you on next Friday. We'll take more design questions. Um, everybody watch RuPaul's Drag Race tonight at eight yeah. o'clock on VH1. I'm gonna be watching. It is um, it is the Snatch Game. And don't forget to drink every time someone oh. says girl. girl. And that, that's with a um, U, girl. I'm a girl with a big O U up in the middle. Um, yes, so, yes, honey. Awesome, well, Carson, this is, you know what, I love, I mean, I'm th TGIF with Carson and Fab Farm. Fab at the farm. Right. Thank yeah. God it's Felicia and thank God we're at the farm. Yeah. So we'll see you guys back here every Friday. Every Friday. 12.30 to 1.30. Yes. And that's an overlap because I usually do my show from 12 to 1 and Tom does his show from 1 to 2. Yeah. So, so we're, we're going right. to, um, okay. we're going to overlap. <laughs> Carson, I love that we're doing this. This is like, it's Me like, too. but okay, we've got to go. They're going to kick us off. It's uh, 1258. I okay. love you and I love, love more. Fab, at, Fab at the farm. And this has been an absolute treat. Um, Carson, okay. I'm going to switch over to um, get to uh, uh, house calls. You're not going to be on yes. because you have, you have a conference call, but next. I do. Okay. I do. But call okay. me tonight during drag race. Okay. Oh. Bye. Have fun, girl. Bye, girl. <laughs>